You know when you're super young in the candy store and you're seeing all these colors, you're like, oh, I want some fucking jelly beans and like a jawbreaker and all this and your parents won't get you that. So it's like you're in this heaven, yet you just can't reach it. So it's almost like you're in hell. Uh, well, this is not going to be that because the result you're seeing right now is something I'm going to teach you how to do and more so. Um, it's completely procedural using geometry nodes so you can get a bunch of variations just by changing like a couple parameters. And I think this one actually looks pretty cool and it also has the benefit of being simple, which you don't usually get both of those usually those exist in different spheres so um, again uh, we're going to be making this effect you can see it's entirely node based and there aren't really that many nodes but um uh, we can get some cool looking stuff so let's just get into it so i'm going to be using blender version 3.0 alpha use whatever you want but uh, geometry nodes is this thing that is uh, constantly updating uh, so i would recommend getting one of the newer versions although you should have all the nodes so uh, in your default scene what i'm going to do is start up our geometry nodes so take the cube make it a geometry nodes thing so this now has a geometry nodes modifier we know how that works um, I'm gonna delete the input so that, you know, this uh, cube is really just a placeholder object. We're like, yes, we are using you. We are manipulating you cube, but we don't actually want you, right? Story of my life. Um, so now we have a placeholder for our geometry nodes and we can get started. As for the camera and the light, you can just keep it there. It doesn't really matter. Um, so the effect that you saw before, it's very complicated to explain what was happening, but long story short, it's basically two spirals that are kind of opposite of each other, growing and shrinking in opposite speeds and all that. So we need to make a spiral. Um, and since uh, recently, or maybe it was a month ago, I haven't been keeping track, there's been all these curve nodes and cur curve uh, primitive nodes were set up for this. So for a curve primitive, we're gonna use a spiral. So we don't actually have to mathematically make this ourselves, which is nice. Um, the curve spiral lets you control the resolution, a bunch of other stuff. So I'm just gonna pick a high resolution. For the start radius, which is basically how small or how close to the origin can this get, I'm just gonna pick zero so that this can actually be at the origin. And you could see, you know, we could rotate it and it looks like this hypnotic thing. I'm getting lost in it. Uh, we can also do the uh, end radius, all this, turns, height, whatever. I'm gonna set the height, which is, you know, how high up the spiral goes to zero. I want it to be on the XY plane. And as for rotations, I'm just gonna add one so that, you know, there's three rotations. Cool. Uh, like I said, we need two spirals opposite of each other. So we have one. Uh, how do we get the other? Well, we could make another spiral and like rotate this and combine them, uh, but we don't want to use extra nodes if we don't need to because we want to calculate quickly. So what I'm going to recommend is we are going to take a transform. In other words, um, if we just view this, I haven't really gotten this viewer to work. I'm just going to do it like that. Uh, we can now control this, you know, with the X, Y, Z translation, rotation, whatever. I'm just going to rotate this by half a turn, which is 180 degrees, half a circle. Uh, we take both of these and join them. So I just added a join geometry node. Uh, so really what we are doing is cloning this with one of the instances or clones. Really, it's an instance um, being offset from the other. So you can see we have two spirals, but uh, the difference being this rotation. So identical. And then I'm offsetting it by 180 degrees. You're not stupid. You understand it. Okay, beautiful. Uh, we have two spirals opposite of each other. Now what I want to do is this growing shrinking effect, uh, which also would have been hard without geometry nodes. But uh, there is a special curve node called curve trim, right? Yes, curve trim. Uh, what this one does, and I'm just going to be affecting the main spiral here, is it ima imagine that your path... Imagine that your curve is a path with a start and end point. This is saying how much of it should be shown. So um, in this case, none of it. Here I'm saying go up to like 13% of it and then go all the way around. So this is trimming it, okay? Uh, but you can see this is kind of like the growing and shrinking thing. And if we were to add another one, so I basically have two chains here, the original spiral and the offset one. Um, each one is going to get its own curve trim, and we are going to offset these, so they're opposite from each other. So at one point, it's going to be like this. At the other point, it's going to be like that. So they're always going to be opposite of each other. So let's animate that uh, using some procedural stuff. So to do this, I'm thinking I want this to grow and shrink over and over and over again, oscillating periodically. Um, trigonometry, trigonometric functions are probably the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to use either a sine or a cosine wave. It doesn't matter too much. Again, this is a function uh, that oscillates between negative one and one. I use it in every tutorial. So, you know, learn it if you haven't. Um, this is perfect because we can get it to grow and shrink, etc. 
I'm also going to add in another node. This is just outsourcing some of my work into an area where we can change the parameter. I'm going to type in hash frame, which is the driver that gives us the frame number. So on frame one, it's set to one. On frame two, you can see I'm going down the timeline. It's two, three, four, five, six, right? It gives you the frame number. I'm going to take this and divide it by 30. In other words, this node stores the time or the frame number, uh, but 30 times slower. I'm going to take this, connect it to the sign. And I know this isn't correct yet, but just to show you, I'm going to take this and connect it to the end point. So you can see now this thing is animated. So it's growing and shrinking because, again, sign's now going to negative one. Now, the issue here is you can see nothing's happening for a while. And then after a while, it will start growing again. Um, so the question is, why was it like doing nothing for a bit after it like shrinks to zero? Uh, the answer is the sine wave. As you know, it goes from negative one to one. And the area of it that's in the negative numbers, like zero to negative one, um, doesn't make any sense here because we need a zero to one input. Um, so long story short, we need to change this function from going to negative one to one. We want to like linearly remap this to zero to one or something like that, uh, which is also something I do all the time. So let's take map range. Um, I'm connecting this. I'm saying take this input interval, 0 to 1, send it to 0 to 1. It's not what we want. We say sine goes from negative 1 to 1, and now it's going to be re remapped to 0 to 1. So you can see as it goes here, it then immediately grows. Again, what's happening here is we've remapped this function to a area, a uh, codomain, a range of 0 to 1. So we've taken negative 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. You understand. Okay. Um, now, the thing is, we can't like take this and plug it into both of these because then they are going to be in sync, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. Uh, but there's like a little too much symmetry. I want it to be a bit more chaotic and hard to follow. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make another chain for this. So now uh, this one is exclusively um, for this one. And what I'm going to change is right now these are identical, right? There's no difference between these chains. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this input. So again, sine has a period. It also has a phase and all this. Um, if, you, if we make this number something bigger than zero, you can see now they're slightly offset from each other. Like one ping, ping pongs a bit um, before the other. We can increase the size of that effect, et cetera. So you can see now it's starting to look a bit more complex. Uh, but to get them to literally be opposite of, of each other, where one's in the center, the other one's like at the outer rim, if you know what I mean, to get them exactly opposite of each other, you need the number pi because uh, sine has a period of 2 pi. Don't worry about it. But you can see as this is about to reach the top, this is reaching the center, and now it's flipped. And then this is reaching the outside, this is on the center, flip. OK, um, the nice thing about this is like it looks visually complex, uh, but because they're literally opposite from each other, it's almost like this is a length conserving function because as uh, one grows, the other shrinks and might literally be a length conserving function. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. I think it might be dependent if we set this to length or not, uh, which I'm not going to do. But we could. Um, OK, so that looks cool. Um, we want to basically, at this point, make this thing look as visually complex as possible, because we have the basic setup. Uh, now we just want to you know, get as much out of it as possible. Uh, so one thing I'm going to do is we have all this, the two spirals opposite from each other that we then join. I'm going to save this, by the way. I'm going to call it available on Patreon, because that is true. You can get this one file on Patreon. You don't need to make it yourself. Link in the description. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, but one thing we can add to add some visual complexity is I'm going to have all this. I'm then going to transform it. So let me just reset this node. I'm going to transform it. So basically, this whole thing is a setup that we can then move, right? Um, I'm going to rotate this. So I'm going to have this spinning as it's doing the whole thing. So uh, same kind of thing. Hash frame. That's the frame number divided by, let's say, 30 again. So same speed. So it looks like the thing's still centered, but this is much more like visually interesting. So wherever this endpoint is, it's gonna change like every single time, um, or at least it should. Either way, this is what it looks like without it, very stationary, and then with. It's got this kind of a hypnotic uh, growing thing to it. So that's one way we can add visual complexity. Um, another way is making this thing actual geometry that we can see and light and render. So let's do that. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point, so you could really do this in any order of operations you want, but to turn this into a mesh, I'm going to type in exactly what you think. I want my curve to become a ice cream cone. No, a mesh, curve to mesh. Um, so you could either put this here after the rotation, or you could put it before, and then that geometry is going to rotate. It doesn't matter too much. I'm going to do it like this. There might be an advantage to one over the other, but I can't think of what it, what it would be. Um, either way. 
So we have curve to mesh. So now this is actually um, a bunch of vertices, but you know, you can't really see anything. Um, but you can see uh, this actually has a second input. It's called profile curve. So just like a, um, in Cinema 4D, it's called like a sweep or something, like a sweep NURBS. Um, but in the same way that we can have like a circle or some other shape sweep along this path so it actually gives it thickness, uh, this is what this node does. So for example, it would be better to show you. Uh, for the profile curve, I'm gonna type in circle. We want a curve circle, not a mesh one. So again, the one in the curve property, or no, the curve primitives, curve circle. Take it, connect it. You can see now this thing has thickness. So what you want to imagine is this circle that we can't really see, but the circle, um, I guess we could see it. The circle that we can control stuff about, right? I'm going to have that sweep along the path, and that's what's going to be visible. Um, obviously, radius, I'm going to bring that down until it's barely touching, and for my experimentation, 0.14 is a good number. Okay. So same setup, it's rotating, it's like opposite from each other, oscillating, but now uh, we have some uh, thickness to this thing, which means if we were to like render this, I'm just gonna go to cycle, start setting up our scene. This thing actually has shading, right? It's a 3D object that we're procedurally controlling, long story short. Um, so name of the game now is to add visual interest. So first of all, setting up the scene, I want the black background, and for the color management, this part isn't too important, but I like it. I set it to standard, what this does, especially since we're going to be messing with the colors in a bit, um, any values, any colors that are one, in other words, white, are peak whiteness, uh, whereas in Filmic, that's not the case. Either way, this just uh, changes the dynamic range in some sense to a, a style that I like more. So here's our setup again. Nothing too interesting, but let's add a material to this. Um, and the weird thing about materials, and I'll show you, is uh, if we were to just, you know, shade our editor, select our object, and this thing already has a material, right? Um, if we were to change the color of this, nothing happens, even though, yes, this is the material that's assigned. So I'm gonna call this spiral. Um, it's just not gonna affect anything. Uh, reason is is because geometry nodes, it's both good and bad that it does this. Um, it doesn't really assign a material until you tell it to do so, which means it's not gonna work, um, but it does give us control and we're actually gonna use that in a second. So uh, what we need to do is after all of this, all these nodes, we add in a material assign node. So we're going to assign a material to all this. You want to make sure that it's at the end of the chain. So after we turn this into a mesh, order of operations matters. Uh, we're going to assign our spiral material. And now you can see this thing's working. Uh, what do I want this to look like? Well, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to use Fresnel, uh, which is view angle dependence. So you can see it's changing as I you know look at it from different angles. Uh, but from the top, it just kind of gives this thing an outline, which I like the look of. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to connect it to the base color. Uh, visualize that and now it looks like this uh, multicolored thing kind of like a, a lollipop from hell or something like that you know like a, a sinister looking thing so there we go uh, basic material for this but uh, you know it looks good uh, I would like it if there was even more visual interest and since you already saw the final results you already know what I'm gonna do so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add kind of like a boundary mesh and we'll talk about what that means in a second but uh, that boundary mesh is also going to have an interesting material. So first question is, how do we make the boundary mesh? Well, um, this is the exact kind of thing that a convex hull does. What's a convex hull? Well, imagine we have a monkey or any kind of mesh. Um, imagine we wanted to run physics or something on it. It would be very uh, cost costly. I feel like I'm going on a tangent. Imagine you want to do physics with this monkey. It wouldn't be very good because this thing has a lot of vertices, especially if we like subdivide it like this, right? Um, so what we want to do is we want to make a mesh around it that, you know, has less vertices, easier to calculate. Um, one way to do this is using something called a convex hull. So I'm just going to type in convex hull, and you can see it makes a mesh that is kind of like the smallest possible mesh you can make around it, but it is convex. There are no caves in. This whole thing is like rounded outwards. So this is what a convex hull is. Um, and it changes depending on like the uh, orientation of this in some sense, but it would, you know, transform with it. So hopefully that kind of helps. So, so that's a convex hull. Um, luckily, we don't have all the nodes yet in geometry nodes. There's quite a few. There's not even extrude. Uh, but what we do have is a convex hull command. Um, but since this thing is procedurally updating, this geometry is changing, so will the convex hull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything. We don't need this material assigned. So everything up until that point, I'm going to take this, connect it to the convex hull. And now if we were to visualize this, 
you can see it's now doing this weird boundary mesh thing, which it's not as simple as it's this shape rotating and shrinking. Uh, you can see at some point it literally gets two corners and it does some complicated stuff. That's our convex hull. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to join it with everything. So again, this part's important. We now have two chains. So everything making the spiral is going to get assigned a material. Um, on the other hand, this one's going to have a convex hull. Different material we're going to assign. Actually, let's do that right now. So I'm going to make a new material. I'm going to call this one convex hull and assign it here. So these two chains get different materials. That's important. Then we join them, then we visualize them, and then we get this result, which, by the way, we can't really see uh, because the um, material for this thing isn't transparent, so we can't see through it. Uh, but you can see we have this updating convex hull, which looks interesting, and the spiral um, inside of it. So let's uh, mess around with this um, convex hull material. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the alpha and bring it down. In other words, I'm going to make this transparent. And you can see now we can see the things nested inside of it. Um, main issue is it kind of looks glitchy. And the reason is we have intersecting geometry. Like convex hull is really on the boundary of how small can this thing get. Um, so let's give it a bit of buffer room. So after we do the convex hull, let's do a transform. And I'm just going to take the scale and bring it up by like 10%. So it's still the same thing, but it's just 10% bigger than it would be on all uh, dimensions. And now you can see it's interacting more nicely. Uh, we can bring the alpha down even more. And, you know, it looks good. It doesn't look, you know, visually good, but it, 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 it's not glitchy. Um, to make this look visually good, I'm, again, going to use the uh, Fresnel, which for this um, shape, because it's planar at the top because of how convex hull is calculated, uh, because of that, it's basically just going to show the rim of this. Um, and we could control kind of like the intensity of that, right? Uh, but again, with Fresnel, I'm going to take this, connect it to the alpha. So now its transparency is um, correlated to how close it is to the boundary. And you can see visually this looks much, much cooler. And we can change the IOR probably in the other direction to get different kinds of looks. So uh, here's before. I'm going to set it to like 1.3, and that's after. So it's just like this cool boundary thing. So um, again, just to stress this, this is without. It's just like a lame spiral. And then with, um, it automatically, to me at least, makes it more interesting. And we could even take this a step uh, further and add particles and all this. But for now, I'm not going to. Uh, one thing I want to fix is this convex hull has some sharp corners, which kind of breaks this Fresnel a little. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften it a little. Uh, you could do this either before or after the transform. Up to you. Um, I'm going to, I think it's subdivision surface instead of mesh. mesh subdivide literally takes a face and subdivides it without any smoothing. Subdivision surface is like a subsurf modifier. So if we add that, let's see. So, so it's definitely smoother, although it does break our um, geometry a bit. I don't think it matters. Again, I don't think this is going to be any different. Yeah. Uh, what order of operations we put this in. So I'm just going to keep it before. And I'm just going to hope that um what am i hoping for <laughs> um i'm hoping that we're far enough away to not see it i guess there's one thing we could try and i'm just going to try it now um this might be set to shade uh, flat in case it is let's try it so i'm going to try an attribute fill uh, we're going off script now i don't know if this is going to work uh, so the idea at least we'll see if it works is i'm taking this convex hull i'm going to take the attribute which one uh, shade smooth and i'm going to set it to one let's see if that does anything I don't think that changed anything. So before, after, oh well, didn't work. Uh, the theory behind that at least was that uh, this thing was set to shade flat and that's why the thing was broken. I guess let's take off subsurf and just stay with a sharp corner. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, um, at this point we could actually view it from any angle, but this thing was specifically designed to look as cool as possible from the top because again, this is Fresnel based. So I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna position it in the middle uh, without rotation and just kind of like looking down from a top-down view. Whoops. So I'm just going to zoom out. And uh, there we go. There is our result. So uh, things to make this look cool, by the way, when you render. Uh, you want to enable motion blur. Uh, you want to maybe play around with the lighting a bit more. So this is like 100% dependent on the light. Um, right, because it's a BSDF and all that. Um, other things you could do, you could play around with the color since these are two different materials, so the convex hull material could be kind of like a reddish boundary. That looks cool, actually. I haven't played around with that in the original, or maybe I have and I haven't shown it yet. 
Uh, but you can play around with the colors. So here's a green. And then for the other material, the spiral, the way we want to kind of dye this Fresnel, right? Because if we just like make this a singular color, it looks lame. We want the Fresnel. Uh, but the way we kind of dye it is probably with a mix RGB. And we get a mix between two colors. So one of them can be black and one of them can be, you know, some other shade or another way to do that. Um, and by the way, yeah, we do, we should at least have two colors, as you can see. Um, another way to do that is you could use the color ramp. So we have this black to white gradient. I'm going to take white, make it a different color, and now we can also control kind of the thickness of that. Uh, but at this point, I think we're really departuring from the original uh, point of this tutorial. So we have the geometry nodes, everything set up. And one thing we haven't done yet is we have a cool looking thing. But remember, this is procedural. We have parameters. We can we can change the initial conditions and get different looks and it's all going to pile on top of each other. So remember, um, in some sense, the node that started this all is the spiral. And then everything else branched off from that. We had the second copy that was rotated. And then we used this math to say how fast should it open and close with the trimming. And then we had the convex hull, right? It's all dependent on this. Meaning if I was to like change the start radius, now we have an entirely different look where there, there's this like uh, area in the middle that will never get surpassed and we still get the convex hull calculating correctly. Uh, we could also change the height of it, which is more of like a 3D effect. So if you want it to, you know, kind of go up and down like that. Um, additionally, uh, you could try a low resolution mode. So here's a hexagon version of the same thing. It looks pretty interesting. Here's a pentagon version of it. So you can see how like fast we can iterate here. I, re I would recommend picking even numbers for this because of the half rotation offset, by the way. But don't worry about that. Um, additionally, uh, more or less rotations. So we could kind of simplify the look of this or make it visually like denser, although we should probably increase the gap for that. And then finally, how big can this thing get? And we I guess we can also reverse it. But um, there you go. I think I think I've uh, adequately explained this effect. So hopefully uh, you learned something about how to make this. I'm sure you did. Wow, twenty something minute tutorial. Either way, um, thank you for watching. This is the part of the tutorial where I shamelessly promote because I feel like I've earned it at this point. So here's what's up: uh, Patreon. There's a link in the description. Why should you join and why should you do it right now? Well, uh, first of all, you would help support these tutorials and the CG Matter ones. That's just a thing. But uh, here's what you get in exchange: you get one files. This one file file, you could have just downloaded it uh, without making it yourself. Uh, but also any other blend file I've ever made over the last, I think it's getting closer to three years now. Uh, so there are maybe literally hundreds of blend files to download. Um, so you could get all the blend files. Also early access. So you could have seen this tutorial a day or so early. This one probably a day early. Um, so people get to see it before you. Um, additionally, you also get exclusive tutorials a couple times a month. Those are for projects that I'm not putting on either channel, but those are just bonuses or just things that I think are useful for people to know. Um, so you get extra tutorials that are exclusive to Patreon, but all of these things exist over there. There's also Discord and all this, but um, if you want those benefits with the addition, added benefit of helping your boy uh, keep these tutorials funded, best tutorials on uh, YouTube, that's the way to do it. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something and um, yeah, candy store analogy coming to a close.